At the core of every stop-motion animation are the puppets. And at the core of every puppet is an armature. And that is the quality of lines you're going to get on this channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at what armatures are for, how they work, and the various pros and cons of the different types. And I promise to keep the cheesy lines to a minimum. A puppet's armature fills two main functions. Firstly, it allows the puppet to move in the ways that it needs to. For a humanoid character, this normally involves bending at the elbows and knees and rotating at the shoulders and hips. If a character needs to be able to bend down to pick up a flower, the armature needs to allow for this. The second job of an armature is to make sure that once a puppet is in position, it does not move. You don't want to be in the middle of a shoot where several minutes can pass between each shot and have the puppet slowly drooping between each one. Armatures normally take the form of a skeleton upon which the rest of the puppet is built. The armature can extend into the hands, the feet, even the face in some cases. Today we're going to be looking at the three most common types of armature and looking at what is good and bad about each one. The first type of armature is a bit of a cheat in that there is no distinct armature that you could point at. It is when the puppet itself has an inherent stiffness that allows it to stay in position. This could be if the puppet was made out of something like plasticine and wasn't so big that it would bend under its own weight. Equally, it could be some object or toy that comes articulated. You get items like this, which have joints that can hold a position. Also, things like camera tripods. One of the projects I'm going to be looking at is see if we can get one of these things to look like it's walking. Action figures are becoming increasingly more detailed and poseable these days, making them prime candidates for animating. Shows such as Robot Chicken take full advantage of this opportunity. But you don't have to go complex and expensive. Sometimes simple is better. One of the most common toys I see animated is Lego. And it's easy to see why. They look great. They stay where you put them. And you can move them around a reasonable amount. Which brings me to the problem with animating toys. You see, the range of movement on a Lego figure is very limited, as is the case with many other toys. You either have to work within these restrictions or modify the toy to allow for more flexibility. The most common way of doing this is to put wire in the joints to either strengthen them or allow them to move in ways they otherwise couldn't. The result isn't perfect, but it does make things a little bit more dynamic. Speaking of wire, let's move on to the next type of armature. If you rummage around a puppet maker's workshop, you will probably find some of this. This is one millimeter aluminium wire, and this stuff is great. It is light and flexible, yet strong enough to hold its own position. It is also really cheap, with a 10 meter roll costing about £1.50. Not only can you use it to modify your action figures, you can also build an entire armature with it. If you twist it together, it becomes stiffer and stronger and can make a suitable skeleton to build a puppet upon. Twisted wire armatures are far from perfect though. Their weakness is in their joints. Repeated bending can lead to metal fatigue. Eventually these joints can break, which is not something you want to happen inside your puppet, especially not halfway through a shoot. Another disadvantage of twisted wire armatures is that you can't adjust the stiffness of the joints. This is something that an animator is likely to want to do. If a joint is too loose, then the puppet will droop. If a joint is too stiff, then you'll end up wrestling it from position to position and you'll lose the subtlety of movement. Both of these points have been addressed in the third type of armature that we're looking at. If you watch the behind the scenes videos of one of the stop motion animated films, you're probably gonna see a variant of the ball and socket armature. This is the granddaddy of armatures as it has been around for decades, which just goes to show that the technology just works and really can't be improved upon. As the name suggests, this armature consists of balls and sockets, and you won't be surprised to find that the ball goes into the socket. There's a screw in the socket which brings together two plates. The tighter you tighten the screw, the stiffer the joint will be. This allows you to have stiff joints for weight-bearing limbs and looser joints for more dynamic limbs. Using a variety of stiffnesses throughout the puppet, 
You can set up a character that can move appropriately for the scene that you're about to shoot. Ball and socket joints are quite large and will not fit into the fingers of a normal sized armature. To get around that, people often use a hybrid armature, which is balls and sockets for the body and limbs, and then twisted wire for everything else. This raises the issue of wire breaking inside a puppet. To get around that, hands, feet, and even heads are often replaceable. K&S make precision tubing. This is essentially tubes that fit snugly inside each other, each size fitting exactly within the size above. This allows you to make very precise connections between different parts of your armature. You put one size on the end of your wrist, and you put the next biggest size on the end of your arm, and then the two will marry up really nicely. Once they're in position, there are various ways of holding them in place. I like to use a tiny nut and bolt, because, well, you know, they're tiny. Right, there you have it. I'll be covering each type of armature separately in future videos. Remember to subscribe, like, comment and share, and I'll see you next time.